print from what I can hear. It's got live vigilance, life link, and uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you had 40 or more life, you win the game. So that's kind of cool. And uh, there's a bunch of common cards, uncommon cards. You get a flying 1-1 one, one for 1 mana. White creature. Oh, I think I need to move this a little bit. <clears throat> you get a human rogue ally called the Zillapore Cutthroat. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain a life, which is kind of cool. I'm actually seeing that in playlists. And then I found a new favorite cleric from this set. Well, one of them. It's called the Serene Steward. Whenever you gain life, you can pay one white mana. And if you do, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Which is great to, you know, help boost up your other creatures or itself if you're gaining a little, even just one point of life. So here, let me ask a question. Okay. <clears throat> so I gather from uh, what um, Dolan and them were talking about there in the chat, there is no longer interrupts? Yeah, they kind of just melded that in and made it as, you call them instants. They're just combined now because it's pretty much, they pretty much work the same way. You're doing something at instant speed to try and interrupt someone because hmm. pretty much you can interrupt anybody with an instant card for any reason. You know, you want to try to cast lightning bolt on a creature to try and kill it. They can respond by, you know, making, putting giant growth on it to keep it alive and make it bigger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, say, say I didn't end up giving my long, you know, my big uh, uh, strong box away, mm -hmm. and I still had my older cards, I wouldn't be allowed to play anywhere, would I? Mm, well, you might be able to play in Legacy or Vintage Format tournaments, or maybe even uh, Commander. Because you get to use a lot of old cards in Commander, except for whatever they deem banned. Here's a new yeah. uh, cleric that I might like in the tribal deck. The uh, Adrano's Emissary. It's all it does is while it's staying in, on the field, it's when it, during my upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Which uh, adds to the life gaining and uh, beneficial abilities of the cards in this deck. <clears throat> yeah, I kept running into when I when I when towards the end I kept running into things where people were banning kismet and stasis. Oh, and it was like that was part of my uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, because everything comes into play tap, and you can't untap anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've there's some new lands in this set that come when they come into play tapped, then you get you get kind of a spell effect from them, or a triggered effect basically. Mortuary mire here. When it, when it enters the battlefield, you can put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library, and it's free. All you got to do is put it into play tapped. <laughs> oh, so things don't come into play tapped anymore? Some can, as long as it says, you know, uh, just like that, or the new, some of the new lands, they come into play tapped unless, some, unless a special condition happens. Uh, like you have more, like you control less land, or you control more land, or anything really. Okay. Oh man, I, I was having a real bad time at that pre-release, so I didn't really get a whole lot of good stuff for it. <clears throat> All right, so that, so that intro pack is done with. There's not a whole lot you can talk about here, but with the two free, with the two boosters you get in it, I'm gonna open those up and see what I can get. Um, let's see. Uh, if I find a, a worthwhile common car or uncommon card, I'll probably mention it. But this card's been reprinted before. It's called Bone Splinters. You you sacrifice a creature as an additional cost for one black mana, and you get to destroy a target creature. I kind of wish there was a, a instant version of this, probably one that costs two mana to do, do the same, exact same thing. So that'd be kind of yeah. cool. But a lot of the black removal in this is not very good. It's like either slow or just something else. Here's another question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, back in the Alpha and Beta Unlimited days, a lot of the flavor text and even the, the actual descriptions of what the card does, you know, they, they didn't really proofread all that well. Oh. Like, yeah. I remember the Unlimited channel. It never said it had to be your life. 
Oh yeah. So I mean, I guess you know, theoretically, you could channel their life. Oh <laughs> it, yeah. It didn't say it didn't say it had to be casted on you. Yeah, they kind of messed that up, didn't they? So I was just curious: has, has there been anything, anything like that lately, or did they actually like pay people to proofread now? Uh, they've they've definitely gone to lengths to change, making sure that things are worded correctly. Mm. It's not since. I just well, I can't think of the word of the spell because the original the original wording of it. In, I think it was called impulse. You look at the top four cards, mm -hmm. you pick one and put the rest on the bottom of your library. But then it says to shuffle your library. But but uh, it it's been errated where it takes off that last line, so you don't have so you don't shuffle it after you put everything on the bottom that you didn't pick. All right, uh, let's see. This one card I might be pretty fun to play, maybe as a one of in a deck. It's called the Blighted Fen. It's another kind of a spell effect, but you got to sacrifice the land itself for like, in this case, four man, four mana and one black mana, to target opponent sacrifices a creature. So you're, so in one go, you're you're giving up six, you're tapping or giving up six lands just to kill a creature that you didn't choose, but. You know, I kind of like the sacrifice effects of s spells like that. <clears throat> and here's the one of the biggest reasons that people are wanting Zendikar back. Because they always come out with these full art uh, basic lands. You know, you don't need to have tap to d add green mana to a forest nowadays. So now they come out with full art lands that people just love to have. And he, so wait, <clears throat> lands are different now? I mean, most of the time, unless it was like a dual land or something like that, you just brought it out and you tapped it for mana and that was it. Well, they, they made sure to label the basic lands as basic lands and everything else is just a land or a legendary land. They made legendary as a as a card type instead of a, like a creature type or a, even a land type if, that's what, if that was the case. Hmm. And most, and a lot of the times now in the in the booster packs, you get to chance of a creature token, or some kind of other token card. This of uh, this card, the ele elemental, trample haste, uh, belongs to like some red mage. Whenever you play a land, you get to pay three mana and put one of these guys out. Okay. It it you might think of it as a really weak lightning bolt or a ball lightning. And then it still gets exiled or sacrificed at the end of turn two, according to the the card that makes him. So they'll be and they've and now for the rare, which is kind of interesting. It's called uh, Brutal Expulsion. It's an instant speed. It's devoid. That's the new keyword for this set. It's that the card is colorless, even though there's color in to cast it and sometimes even to activate abilities on certain creatures. That's kind of the main theme because things are getting, mana is getting wiped out a bit and it's losing their color identity. Which I can show you some of their, some of the Eldrazi and that's, those things are, ugh. I hate thinking about them. If, if you can see what the art is like on here, that's some weird freaky stuff that's going on in here. I'm not even sure how many creatures is in this. <laughs> it's in the art. It's just like one big one, one smaller one trying to deal with something else. <clears throat> anyway, this spell is choose one or both. So you get to do double effects if you wanted. Return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. Which, if you remember memory lapse, that's kind of like what that is. Counter a spell and return it to their hand. So you're just basically returning, it's it's basically a counter, but it returns to their hand. Or you can return a creature to their hand that's in play. And the second uh, choice is it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker, which uh, it either specifies that you can do a planeswalker, or if it's to target player, you can have it redirected to the planeswalker that they control. And if that permanent would be put into a graveyard this turn, you get to exile it, which is the same as removing it from the game. And so now they call it an exile uh, so pile, I guess. 
which is now a, a new resource to be used for some of the creatures in this set. And boy, oh boy, that's gonna be I'm, that's gonna take some getting used to. So back when I played Odyssey, the graveyard was a resource to using up uh, cards in there, or even making things better with more cards in your graveyard. And now you got an exile pile, which maybe that's why I'm not really enjoying this set much, because I didn't really enjoy um, the Odyssey block. <clears throat> Alright, here's a here's another Devoid card to show. It's called Swarm Surge. It's a black and two colorless mana. It's a Devoid, and it says creatures you control get plus two plus zero until end of turn. Colorless creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. So, you know, artifact creatures or the Devoid creatures in the set, the Eldrazi, they will all get an extra effect from this card, as well as the power boost. Let's see, what else do I have in here? Ah, uh, here's an Eldrazi. This is a pretty good one for limited for people. It's called the Eldrazi Sky Spawner. It's a 2-1 flying. It costs blue and a colorless. This mirrored effect is really bugging me. I wish the camera would... Okay. And a lot of the Eldrazi's will spawn a colorless Eldrazi Scion. 1-1. One, one. <clears throat> and you get to sacrifice those Scions to make... To add one mana to your mana pool. Which is... Part of helping to ramp out and pay and play uh, bigger casting cost creatures in this set because there's some really big ones like up to nine and ten mana right now and these some of these Eldrazi that can put out these colorless scions can help you bring them out faster not just for land searches like the green used to be or temporary mana like black or red <coughs> uh, games changed quite a bit since I played oh buddy yeah Let's see if I can find. Oop, this is like a mini lord here. You remember like Goblin King, right? This one is not quite as awesome, but this guy is the Ruination Guide. He has another mechanic too, called Ingest, because when he deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his her of his or her library, which uh, helps with mill milling strategies, you know but also for using fuel uh, for some of their effects and all other and, all, and other colorless creatures you control get plus one plus zero <coughs> so that's kind of cool <coughs> uh, I was like trying to study up on all this stuff for limited format but now I gotta try to practice up for you know standard playing with all the new cards for, for tur regular tournaments. I'm going to put on a put a cough drop in my mouth. <coughs> all right. What else do I got in here? Um, I don't know what was equivalent back then, but this land of Evolving Wilds, you get to tap and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card and put it into play tapped. Which is really useful for some of the creatures in this set because they have something called landfall. This is one of the smaller ones, but it's still pretty fun and powerful because every time a land comes into play under your control, you, they get plus one plus one until end of turn. You there, Rob? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Sorry, I was looking at prices of uh, my old cards and just shaking my head. Like my Lotus is be worth like thirty grand and. <clears throat> oh yeah, boxes are, are worth thousands of dollars a piece. Oh yeah, you uh, I had handfuls of them. I know, man. Sick to my stomach. <laughs> Those are some sad times to for that, I guess. But yeah, you played that one evolving wilds. You get a landfall trigger, and then you can sacrifice and put another land into play, and it's another landfall trigger. So you could event you could actually have a four four to attack with if you wanted. And there are some all kinds of ways to get land in here. <clears throat> so what's the average strength, you know, on for creatures? You know, I mean, you know, back in the day, I mean, you know, you, you had, of course, you know, you had like the pit fiends and stuff that are like seven seven and things like that. Yeah. But for the most part, most of your guys are like 
you know, three Fords, and every now and then, like Black would pull out his uh, his uh, vampire as a four four. Oh yeah, um, you know, things yeah. like that. Well, in the case of green, you're you're usually going to be expecting a, you could be expecting a, for two mana at least a two two. Uh, there, yeah, green's still the creature deck. It pretty much is, but white has a lot of efficient creatures, and because they you'll sometimes see a two one for one white mana, much like the Savannah Lions, but no longer rare, unless they have another added effect to make them even more uh, interesting. Because uh, two one for one, one white mana is now like a co uncommon instead of a rare. And then there was the one legendary creature for one white mana. You get a two two, but because it's legendary, you can only have one out on your side at a time. Here's another way of getting more land, but it doesn't come into play. Which I'm gonna try to. F I need to try to find a set of the older version of this. It's Sylvan scrying. You get to look, search your library for God, freaking. Okay, you get to search your library for any land card. Doesn't have to be basic land. You can just look for uh, if you remember the Urzatron lands. Urza's mine. Urza's. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can search for those cards with this here. Oh, you can still play those? Uh, no, not in this format. Not in standard. But it's it it is legal in um, what's the thing I call it? In modern, Maybe. which that too you could. <clears throat> um, I got a friend texting me. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if you wanted to actually uh, see it or not. All right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to link him in this. Since this isn't exactly good quality recording here. And I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't going to plan on editing out anything except maybe trimming out parts in between things. Uh, I'm going to send him a link on my phone. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I doing? Yeah, I was telling you about Sylvan Scrying, so you get to look for any kind of land, even your special ones. Which uh, I can't blame someone for doing it, but it's going to really anger me if they play their really big ass creature that I can't kill. Because that happens. Alright, the last four cards in the back of the pack was... Uh, I got one of those Eldrazi Scion tokens. Where it says it chose to sacrifice this creature. And you get to add one mana to your mana pool. So I get to add that to a small collection of mine. Uh, the, the full art land, basic land I got was a Plains. Which is kind of neat looking. Uh, it's got the Hedrons. I don't, that's kind of a theme, a theme for this set. Um, okay, he's watching, I guess. He doesn't have audio though, so he's just gonna be staring at the screen while we're talking. I did get a foil card. It's not the best card, but you know it's foil. I'm sure someone will want it. It's a Minotaur warrior ally. They had a lot of creature types, but really, over the years. They even put in human if you haven't if you haven't seen those. Where they it was kind of taboo to do human back then. And it's got the rally ability, which works for with allies usually. Whenever whenever this card or another ally come enters the battlefield, which also stands for comes into play. Under your control, creatures you control gain trample. Which unless you have a way to pump them up real big, like you know, that's not really gonna do a whole lot, but a four Does mana, have, like unholy strength, and yeah, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. unholy strength or uh, titan strength is what is a, is a red uh, spell equivalent, yeah. sort of. It's plus three plus one. And you get to scry, which is something else that I can tell you about later. Cool. <laughs> All right, I need to start making piles, I guess. And then the rare I got in this second pack from the intro pack was the Orin Reef Hydra. Pretty much every set's going to have some kind of a Hydra card. This one isn't even an XX, too. It's, and it's got Landfall. For six mana, you get a 5-5 five, five Trample. With Landfall, and when you play a land, it gets plus one, plus one counter. If it was a forest, like any kind of forest, basic land or not, it'll get two plus one, plus one counters instead. 
So it can be pretty beefy when a mono green deck. <laughs> Which yeah, that's is, cool. yeah, it's a, it's a Hydra. It's definitely a Hydra. I mean, it looks like it wants to snack on a, on a freaking uh, Eldrazi here. And I guess it's not working for him. He, he probably shouldn't be on his phone for that. <clears throat> Alright, let's... I'll just uh, I'll sort through that later. Alright, uh, I'm trying to put all my freaking... Yeah, I'm even. I'm doing terribly. I'm not even putting the names of the stuff in here. Reef. Hydra. Hydra. All right. What's the other land? What's the other rare I had? No, seriously. What is the other rare I had? <laughs> I could not tell you. No. Oh. Memory. Bad memory. Uh, oh, Brutal Expulsion, that, that blue-red spell. Return a spell or creature and then or deal two damage to something. Um, they come up with some interesting names for this. They kind of have to because they don't want to, like, you know, seem boring with it. And I thought using the word discombobulate was funky enough. That's a spell from... Actually, I think that was Odyssey block. Just it lets you counter a spell, and you look at the top four cards of your library and rearrange them however you want. <clears throat> All right, let me finally open this booster box. Wow, this is gonna take a while if I'm gonna do all 36 boosters now. Now, the reason people are want, really wanting Zendikar nowadays is because of the chance to get what they call the Expedition Lands. Which they kind of made new cards for older lands that aren't, that some of them aren't even standard legal anymore. And they just, and those are like valued at like hundreds, they can be high, valued at hundreds of dollars because of how rare they are. And also how shiny they are. And how full arty they are. It is a wonder to behold to see one of these such lands. Alright, I'm just going to go in the back of the list. I got a core ally creature token, which I'm pretty sure a white creature makes these because it's a white card. What do you want, friend? Eh, yeah, I'll let him know. Okay. It's a full art swamp. Those are always cool. Black and white is my favorite double double color, but green, white, black is my favorite three color combination right now. And I always found three colors to be a little too slow. It was hard to get going, especially when someone has like a speed and you're playing against a speed deck. Yeah, I I've actually managed to do pretty well with with it nowadays. You, there's lands, there's there's so much lands that you can use to help fix your mana. Plus, there's the fetch lands where you can sacrifice it for one life and search for a, you know, whatever the two named lands, basic lands that they save for, or not, not basic lands, but like forest or plains or forest or mountain stuff like that. All right, this is a rare spell. It's a colorless sorcery, which never happened before the other, the last Zendikar set, and it's called Gruesome Slaughter. And it, what it does is, until end of turn, colorless creatures get, you control gain tap. And this creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. So it's pretty much a one-sided slaughter fest, which is pretty much how it's worded for the title of it. So you get all your colorless creatures to start dealing damage to the other creatures without any trouble. <coughs> which is nice, I guess. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Now this is the new discard spell. It's not that great. It's a devoid spell. It's black and white, or black and a colorless. Um, target a player reveals his or her hand. You choose a card from it with convert a mana cost three or greater, and exile that card. Actually, that's a little bit better than I thought. Because there's the Inquisition of Kozlek spell that's only one black mana, but you can only choose a mana card, uh, a card with mana cost three or less. So, 
you know, this will easily kill, get rid of the, one of their biggest spells that they may have had in their hand before you can, before they have the chance to cast it. <coughs> okay, next one. Let's just try to do a little quicker here. <laughs> Back then they only had allies in certain colors. Now allies are in all the colors. Because they're all okay, kind of... I've never even heard of that. Yeah, like every time an ally comes into play on your side, you get an effect for each ally. Here's another El Eldrazi Scion token. They kind of got a few different variations of each of them. Or at least with the scions, so you're not going to get the same one. Like, you know, you got the one weird squid looking thing, and then you got the one weird bug thing. Yeah, this is some Eldritch stuff that I'm not that I'm not quite enjoying the art for. Another full art swamp. A diff I think it's different. Maybe. Yeah, it is different. And the rare and the rare is actually something I need or kind of want. The Wood Wasteland Strangler. It's a colorless creature for black and two. Cool. When it, and it has the ability when it enters the battlefield, you can put in a card an opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard. And if you do, target creature gets minus three, minus three. So it's a removal uh, ability. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you. With all this talking about colorless. Yeah. Are there still artifacts? Oh yeah. It's just not. Ever since all the uh, there's been a mm, couple of artifact heavy sets, but now they're just going with creatures that have no color instead of just being you know of some kind of a mechanical being because you know that kind of gets confusing I guess. Why would you be? Why, it's like just Shatterstorm. Yeah, couldn't kind of destroy that. Oh yeah, yeah. There's Shatterstorm, but uh, lately there's something years few years before there was something called uh, a creeping corrosion which is the green version of it which I got some of which is great cool. okay um, oh for seven mana at instant speed of any color you can exile any target permanent <laughs> and that was that was uh See, there was a difference uh, back in the day. Between, Hello, great Google. You know, putting a character in the graveyard or burying the character. Which which was like destroying and can't regenerate, right? Right. There, that, you, know, <coughs> you, you just basically put it aside. It went outside of your graveyard. Yeah, they don't use that word anymore nowadays. They just, and a lot of things don't even say that they can't be regenerated either. Just to make things simpler, I guess. There's not a whole oh, lot of. But I mean, like there were some things that you could just sacrifice the token or spend the mana, and it'll just pop right back up again. So the only way to get rid of it was like disintegrate or very target creature or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know. just like the Wrath of God would say, bury all creatures, right? Uh, right. But there's even a wrath effects, a wrath spell. Uh, that just exiles all creatures, which uh, don't know might be overdoing it. But a lot of those creatures in that set, in that block, would have an effect when it entered the graveyard. So that was pretty important, I guess. And right. it, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, Great Goomba is saying uh, exiling is much more common these days. And minus six, minus six usually used when they want to prevent regeneration. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. But then regeneration, there's not many things that regenerate nowadays. Okay, one more Eldrazi Scion. I'm gonna be getting a ton of those, and one freaky looking island. It looks more like a floating bowl tipped over, but you know, it is pretty sweet looking anyway. Yeah, that was a problem I had at the beginning is that, like, a lot of, like, because I played, like, a blue-white deck for the most part. Yeah. was, like, all the good creatures, one cost, like, a crap ton, and then they couldn't even attack because the opponent needed an island, so you needed to transform one of his lands into an island. Oh, yeah. Like a uh, Leviathan-type guy. Yeah. Or, like, <clears throat> Shark. You know, Shark was great. You, you use a Tim, you know, one of the... Ruby and Sorcerers, yeah. tap and do one damage to any target creature. You, you damage your own guy to give him a 
plus two plus zero and trample to end of turn. And then you throw something like Howl from Beyond or whatever you had on there. Make it bigger. Send his ass over there. Yeah. Yeah. This so, next, this next, yeah. uh, actually, this is a mythic rare that they added that late recently. Well, like seven years ago or so. Uh, that's even rarer than a rare, basically. This one kind of wrecked me in one game of at a pre-release at the pre-release last time. It, for six mana, blue, black, and four, you get a five-seven Eldrazi, which already is pretty insane. But it has a reverse landfall thing, where if your opponent plays land, then they get to exile two cards from his or her library, and you draw two cards. So that's kind of it's kind of messed up there. I was not having fun with that, and I was and I was actually playing a, a landfall deck, trying to make big creatures bigger and trying to kill people faster, which did not pan well for me. I guess I didn't have a whole lot of good enough stuff there. <clears throat> um, yeah, I had I had like one like quick quick kill deck, and. That was a red green, and that's when you know, it's like I don't even know if you could do this anymore. But you could kill someone in the very first round. Um, where you get like you need like a, like either a mox or a mountain, yeah, and a black lotus and a, like a fireball and a channel, like, and you, know, you just stack your decks through those because like they weren't uh, they weren't restricted. Yeah, they weren't restricted then, so you just put like four of each in, and so in a 60-card deck, you're going to have a pretty good shot at drawing those. So you just throw down the land or the mox, and then the Black Lotus, sacrifice that for three green, throw down the channel, yep. channel 19 life, tap your uh, your mountain, and fireball him for 20, and he's dead. Let me change the format on this. The, the lettering is going to be pretty big. All right, let's do that. All right, uh, here's the mountain. It's pretty neat. It kind of the two peaks kind of loop, but then it kind of crumbles right in the middle of it, hmm. which uh, I don't know. Might be a gnomon. Who knows? All right, sire of stagnation. <coughs> All right, let's see what this next rare is. Ooh, that's the one I wanted. They, um, this is the, called the Prism Array. It's for five men and, and it's blue. It's got the keyword for converge, which uh, for anything with converge, it, the, you get a better effect for each color mana you put into it. So if you put five mana into this, five different colors of mana, you get five counters on it, and you get to remove one. If you can remove one of those counters at any time to tap target creature, but the thing at the bottom though is the really free, weird part: one of each color for a scry three effect. And Scry lets you just look at the top three cards for Scry 3, and you get to choose whether to keep those on top or put them on the bottom and then rearrange those cards, whatever you have left over. Which is cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm a fan of five colors, and this is definitely something you can you can try out. I mean, uh, I was looking definitely looking forward to getting at least one of those for maybe anything like... Uh, No, no. I, there's a there's a better one to show you. Once I find it, one of the bigger Eldrazi creatures, and believe me, they get bigger. There's the <coughs> and uh, only one of the main big Eldrazi's have shown up so far, and there's probably and there likely be two more before the end of this story. We got a one one plant token. Uh, I think I just saw a white, green, white creature be able to make one of those. Here is uh, something reminiscent of that Avatar movie, a bunch of floating forests, which is fine. It, it's okay. Are there any blue naked rabbit women in there? Um, yeah, if they're blue and naked, I'm not gonna want to deal with them. <laughs> they they could easily be all drowsy. Ooh, this is the land I was. I'm definitely finding things I want in this mm -hmm. box. The Shambling Vent is a new land. Comes in a, it's a man land if you, because you can turn, you can pay mana to make it into a creature. <clears throat> this one, you get to turn it, make it into a 2 3 creature. 
elemental, black and white, with lifelink. And lifelink is basically when you deal damage, it, you gain that much life. They made a keyword for that. I remember there was an enchantment you could throw down called Living Lands, where you turned all forests into one one creatures. Oh yeah, there's there's been on uh, all kinds of different spell effects, and uh, what you can do in the set with the Awaken ability. Mm -hmm. This one says for seven mana you get to. Oh wow, well first for two mana you get to put two count two plus one plus one counters and target permanent, which is not saying creature. But you can even do it on lands, because obviously with the Awaken ability, you get to turn a land into a creature with, uh, what it says, four plus one counters. Mm -hmm. You can easily add two to that land to make it a 6-6. Six, six. And if you put it on this guy, on this thing, you can activate its ability, because it's already a 0-0. Zero, zero. It'll become a 2-3, make it much bigger, and have that lifelink. So... This all together could make you an 8 6 or an 8 9 creature for one turn uh, to just attack with and gain life from, which is, you know, something. Let me ask you this real fast. I know, like, old fuddy duddy, you yeah, know, talking about magic uh, I, back in the day, but I get you. Um, is there, a, is there still like a like banding to, on creatures together. Like say, mm, yeah. say I have a two five and a two two, and uh, well, let's say two five and a two three, and you attack me with a four four. Now can I use my uh, two five and two three to block your four four, and they both live, or does the card have to have a special thing? Because this is how it worked back in the day. You could use multiple character creatures to block. Yeah. But if the, if the creatures, uh, one of the creatures that you blocked with didn't have the banding ability, right? Then Ooh. you, the attacking um, player, got to choose where the dam, how the damage was laid out. Oh my! So that means, like, uh, I wanted to kill one of your creatures. I attack with a four four. That means I could kill off the two three, and the other one just took a point of damage. No, they kind of been sweeping the that under the rug, and there hasn't been any new cards for banding since back way, way, way back then. Okay, and what about Trample? Oh, Trample's still around. It's now they kind of worded it so any f excess damage after you kill the creature that it may have blocked, it'll just go. It goes sent to the player, or if you're trying to kill a planeswalker, it gets sent. Any excess damage gets sent to the planeswalker. For, uh, forced. Ooh, this one is actually like right now 15, but the price will probably drop at a decent time. This is pretty good. It is Drana Liberator of Malakir, which is, you know, a land setting in this set. Flying first strike for three mana, two, three. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. And it's a vampire ally. So if you attack with like three creatures and she dealt damage, everybody else gets everybody who attacked gets plus one plus one counter permanently. Hmm. Which is neat. Because I got a rhino who'd love to have her on his side. They made the, like pretty much the coolest rhino in the last set. I'm I'm kind of happy for that. Uh let's see. All right. <clears throat> Any other notable cards in here? Oh, here's a here's a pretty notable Eldrazi, I guess. Probably never see play because there's other things that cost that as much and with better effects. Mm, Breaker of Armies. For eight mana of anything, you get a ten eight. <laughs> ten power, eight toughness, and all creatures able to block him do so. So he's got a lore on him. It's a big yeah, yeah, that was another ability that some of the bigger creatures had, where it's like you had to block with everything. Yeah, they don't. So there was no uh, letting some damage through. Yeah, and then uh, what, what's Great Guma saying? The right damage is assigned. Person assigning damage has to assign a minimum amount of lethal damage to a creature or to one of the blockers, 
and then you get to choose and then you can choose who to assign lethal damage to. Uh, I guess that's assuming if you're trying to do multiple creatures with trample. Ooh, this guy. I got I got the legend legendary creature that makes this guy. The five five red green elemental. The 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 guy was named Omnath, and it cost seven men to play him. Every time you play a every time you play a land, you get one of these guys. And every time one of any elemental died on your side, that you could uh, deal three damage to a player or a creature, which is nice. And uh, here's a. Uh, this makes me think of Lion King right here with the big old plateau or elevated land above another land. Is, is that making sense? Yeah. So I just saw something involving Lion King, and uh, I'm getting some good, really useful so cards. Oh. I'm getting some really useful cards in this in this box. Painful Truths, three mana with Converge. So if I play this with three different colored mana, I get to draw three cards and lose three life, or X is the number of colors spent, which you know. Which is good. Three mana for three life for three mana. Right. There's another card that's being played where it's three mana, but you get to scry two, which, you know, look at the top two and see what you want to keep up there. And then you draw two, you know, so if you didn't like those cards, you can just draw two new cards that you would have drawn. And then, but you still lose, and then you lose two life. Like, da, 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 da. no, no, no. I'm just I can't I'm just waiting for one of these new Eldrazi's to come out. Just show you how messed up that this is. Well, I can show you this one. It involves taking creatures or taking cards out of exile from their opponent from your opponent. Hmm. And if you do, he gets four plus one counters on it. He's a six six at five five six mana for five five to start. So if you take stuff out of their exile pile then he becomes a 9-9 a nine, nine for 6 mana. <clears throat> that's not bad. And I have a... Oh, that's alright. I'm really hoping I get one of this Planeswalker. I just grabbed her emblem. Kiora. Emblems are... Planeswalkers create emblems, and once they're in play, they can't be removed ever until unless you start a new game. Uh... And this emblem, uh, when you do, uh, yeah, that's okay. It'll, I'll just try to make it quicker. Uh, her her ultimate ability is really interesting. All right, here's a new island, Mr. Rob Jordan, and here's a landfall creature. It's not very good. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Rob. That's you can say as long as you can. Let me, let me right cool, now. I just I'm, I'm pretty beat, but um, I, this is very interesting. It's 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 interesting to see how the game has changed since yeah. You know, it's played. Ghoul draws overseer. It's a landfall creature, flying vampire. When a when a land enters the battlefield, uh, other creatures get plus one plus zero until end of turn. If it was a swamp, it'd get plus two plus zero. Cool. Yeah. Sorry. Not bad. Uh, no, we already seen that. We... Oh, hey, I, f I remember that. That's, uh... There's another, la there's another spell previously called a Sewing Salt back then. We get to exile target non-basic land. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then you get to search their library, graveyard, and hand for this, for any number of the cards of the same name, and exile them. <laughs> So if they yeah. wanted, this is like a ruin. You can ruin someone's Tron by playing this. <laughs> you know, get rid of their one of their Urza, Urza land pieces, and then uh, they'll never be able to get the extra mana ever again. That sucks. Yeah, I, I, you know, I had such a problem getting those all three out. You know, I didn't. I, you know, I played like a, like, you know, instead of like the round kill deck, I you know, played just a regular red green. And of course, you'd want Urza's land in that because it just you know amps up your fireballs like crazy. Happy day, happy day. What's up? 
I got the Canopy Vista. It's it's the new. Um, well, it's kind of a dual land, but not like uh, as awesome. It comes into play tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. But it fixes my mana up pretty good, and it, it can be fetched, you know, with with uh, um, any number of spells. Good job, man. And I was definitely needing those for my deck. Sweet. I mean, I am like getting really satisfied pulling all these cards. If I can spell, I can write it down here. So yeah, there's one for each of the allied colors. Uh, do you know the allied colors and all that or anything? No, I, I didn't. When I played, there was no such thing as like allies and stuff. Or the the colors that ally with each other. You know, if you look at the back of a magic card. You can oh, kind of see. see what they're aligned to or for yeah. with white. I, I know what you're yeah, Canopy Vista does white and green. Then you have another land that does white and blue, and then black and blue, black and red, and then red and green. So yeah, I'm really happy that I got that. Cool. I, fi I find it funny that the, the back of the cards has never changed. Um. Well, it kind of. Well, after a while, they finally got it going. You know. They can't, if there were some subtle differences. People were not necessarily cheating, but they definitely were taking advantage of it in really early tournaments, back when things were still raw and fresh. Here's a nice dragon token. I have, I have no idea who makes dragons yet. I don't remember anyway. Here's a mountain to go with it. That looks more like kind of a, just like a fissure from a volcano. And I, here's a foil common card, Incubator Drone. When it comes into the battlefield, put a Eldrazi Scion into play. It's four mana for two, three. I guess that's okay. And the rare is, oh, another land. It's one of the main lands, too. <clears throat> uh, Rob, you might want to, you might want to, uh, Correct them, and it's not those weren't foil lands, those are just regular mountains and basic lands. Uh, or, well, they might be hey, hearing me right now. Uh, Lumbering Falls, when you turn I thought, him, I thought, he, I thought he asked about the, the full art, the full art. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the mountain. he was probably meaning like the really expensive ones that I haven't found one yet. Oh, I've right. seen well, other people with those, and those look real nice, but I, I'm an old fart, I'm <laughs> being, I don't know. All right. Uh, okay, I've got Lumbering Falls, which is the green-blue version. When it comes in, what you can turn it into a 3-3 three, three with Hexproof. Hexproof is the ability where you, it can't be the target of your opponent's spells or abilities. It, only you can target target it with stuff. Well, they like spells and such. You know, that was, that was like a really weird keyword of keeping your creatures protected from spells and abilities. Um, Canopy Vista, uh, Lumbering Falls. So I think I'm going to probably trade that away to try to get more stuff. Um, ooh, here's a new, here, here's kind of a, a removal spell. It's an enchantment with flash, which means you can play it as an instant. When it comes into play, you get to exile a creature in opponent controls until yeah. this leaves the battlefield. So until this is gone, that creature is gone. Solid. Which is uh, pretty neat. And it's pretty solid because not, not many people's going to play that just yet. Um, okay, man, I have got to go You're through. You're sitting there uh, standing up on your cards. Oh, dude, I know. I don't even know this guy, and he's, he seems pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, let me tell you. Pre-ordering is like the best idea ever. All right, another Eldrazi Scion. A uh, Swamp. Looking kind of bleak there. And uh, it's a rare. It's an interesting one. It's called Nissa's Renewal. Nissa is a planeswalker from here. Uh, she's trying to protect the pl the land. Uh, and then it says it look search for three basic lands from your library and put them into the battlefield tap. Then shuffle your library and gain seven life. 
uh, for six mana, and it's a sorcery, which I gotta say, I don't know if anyone wants to play this in standard, but it definitely would be kind of cool to just ramp out lands for a big finish with this card, you know, for landfall creatures. This could easily make something to a 9-9 trample if you got the right creature for it. What the hell is that? Is that the top keep poking me for? Is that him? Yeah. You poked me? Alright, let me add this to the list. Uh, if I can spell. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. Okay. I tell you, man. There is some fun stuff. Oh, here's a counter spell. Counter target spell with converted mana cost four or less. If it's countered, it gets uh, exiled instead of going to the graveyard. That's weird. And it's called horribly awry, and it looks like the guy's been like vomiting out seeds or sand from his mouth. So basically, it's spell blast with an extra effect added onto it. A little bit, yeah. And it counter target spell with mana cost four or less. So it it's kind of specific, but. You know, most of the time you're going to be playing something that costs less than four mana. I'm going to put that over here. All right, next pack. Oh, I love that thing. Oh, uh, I forget what the creature one was. A counter target creature. And uh, things like that. Or, or, oh, that's a nice. A nice. Uh, uh, counter target Clarify creature game. spell. Uh, you're probably <laughs> you're probably thinking of. Uh, Counter target creature spell. Uh, remove soul is what I can remember. Yeah, that's what it was. Remove All right. Soul. We saw this before. Felidar Sovereign. Uh, from that intro pack. Lifelink, Vigilance. If you have 40 or more life, you win the game. That's pretty easy. Booyah. All right. I'm going to put that on the list. All right, buddy. I, I think I'm going to bow out. I'm not really. <laughs> I'm so far behind. I'm just basically like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Well, I so, appreciate you coming in and uh, having fun for, for a little bit. I'm yeah, just going to keep talking to myself right and uh, talking to other people on the chat, I guess. I've got, yeah. it looks, I've got people in here now. I know. i got all Dude, kinds of people. People actually want to hang out with you. It's hot. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. i got a cool-ass Vegeta shirt that no one can see clearly. Yeah. And someone so I'm still gonna have it I'm still gonna have it on. I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna All right. I decided to come back and get some meat and Yeah, no problem. Man. To, uh, head out, so, or you, head to bed, so you just do whatever you got and then I'll just keep talking. Because cool. I I I'll, keep uh, I'm gonna enjoy. I'm gonna get real sick of these Eldrazi tokens. <laughs> uh Mountain Funky and Fresh. Oop, another land. Cinder Glade. It's, it's the mountain window. forest. <laughs> Looking. All right. Have fun. See ya. <laughs> oh man, Cinder Glade. Oh, has some serious implications in Commander. Yeah, it does. There was another. There was an enchantment. I guess it. It probably was based on. Oh my goodness. Ooh, this might be fun. If you're playing a ramp deck with for Abzan, Catacomb, Sifter, Green Red, or Green Black comes into play, you get a Elza, Eldrazi Scion. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get to scry one, which is like that one other rare creature. Uh, Scythe Leopard, that's good for landfall. One mana, one one. Cat. Who doesn't love cats? I love cats. Not that my cat's around to hear that. Alright. Let me see here. It is an emblem. Gideon. No implications that he's going to die in this story in the future. But his emblem is fairly easy to play or get out. And uh, creatures can control, get plus one, plus one, which is nice. And it's a forest. Yay. And I already got a promo of this from my pre release pack. But now I have a regular foil of this, the Aligned Hedron Network, where you can kiss anything that with power 5 or greater goodbye once it hits play. You know, unless they have artifact removal. <laughs> who, uh, who really plays with that in the main deck? And uh, the 
I get a second rare in this pack. It's the Prairie Stream. Wow. I'm like, I'm going to have this five color deck made fast. I just need fetch lands now. Blue, white, fetch, blue, white, stream. Oh, I better start writing. Need to write this crap now. If I can spell it without extra capitalized letters. Wow, I gotta say, I'm really happy about this about this booster box. Yeah, nothing, nothing too fun with the commons and uncommons. My camera change, move. Anyway, well, I guess that's my full over full over air for the day. <laughs> I seem to have some interesting luck with the accounts that when I buy a fight. If I was to buy a fat pack, chances are I'd be having a. I could have a. Uh, I have a better chance of getting a foil from there, foil rare. And I have the X Endless One Hydra Eldrazi Toke card. <clears throat> it's a thing, and it exists. Uh. Really don't like these Eldrazi. Really not gonna enjoy this year, am I? Or this year of block. Alright. See if there's anything use oh, another uh Sylvan scrying. I'm up to two now. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to like move the chat over now. And then expand the window a bit. And I don't know what the hell happened there. Um, hang on. Alright, let's do... Oh my. Um, let's try to expand on that. I am a noob, guys. Don't worry about me. This is all amateur work, dead day. Oh, that is adorable. I can even reduce the font on that. Actually, no, I need to... Ah, oh, fuck it. Amateur hour. Format. Yeah, I need to reduce the font. See how that goes? Oh, sort of. I'm still going to be running over on this stuff. <clears throat> Gotta love this. Gotta love it all. Another Eldrazi sign token. And an island. Getting real creative with what they call islands in this set. Ooh, a foil island. Woo. Who doesn't love one of those? I know someone will. And I have something I already got from the pre release. It's called the Sanctum of Ugin. Or Ugin. You know, I kind of don't care how it's spelled. Whenever you. how it's pronounced. When you cast a colorless spell with converted mana cost 7 or greater, you may sacrifice this. If you do, search your library for a colorless creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Joy. <laughs> I don't, haven't seen any decklists make those, but play with those, but you never know what will happen in the future. I'm just going to mark that as a plus two. Or a times two, whatever. Okay, this pile of cards is getting bigger. Thank you, Wazabix. I am having some fun today. Better fun than I had at work. It's an Eldrazi Sauron token, don't worry. Wow. I'm not sure what to think of this, but I think I want it foil. That is a nice looking planes. 
it's just so weird. Like you're in a cave and then you're looking out with all these weird angles of the of, of rocks or land or grass. Ugin creature card. Well, there is an Ugin uh, planeswalker before. Oh, goody! It's something I don't want to see ever again. It's called the Desolation Twin. And here's how it's worded. When you cast Desolation Twin, put a 10-10 Carlos Eldrazi creature token onto the battlefield. Cast! It doesn't even have to be in play. Even if they counter this spell, you're still going to get a 10-10. But if it's fully cast and resolved, then you get two, you get 20 power with the creature for 10 mana. That's, 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 oh, that hurts so much. So much. I just don't want to see it ever again. Oh, I guess I need to write that down. Sweet, merciful God. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, countering it, you just get a 1 10 10 instead of 2. That's not a token at all, that's just some card. And a uh, pretty neat looking island. It's... I can't even just... I can't even describe it. A counter spell becomes a traitor. Oh, here's one of my creatures that I got from my pre-release. Now in this set. Omnath. Locus of Rage. And uh, I'll like it's elemental creature token whenever you play a land you get a 5-5 five five. if this card or another elemental you control dies it you get to deal three damage to target creature or player so have fun with your wrath effect it is not gonna go well for you um, it's too bad it will probably never see play in uh, <coughs> in standard Oh my goodness. Do, 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 do. Oh hey, here's the two one for one mana creature. And it's an ally, of course. Can't go wrong with those today. Oh my goodness. I kind of thought this would only take me an hour somehow. But that's complete crap. <laughs> I was trying to fool myself, wasn't I? Here is a 3 1 elemental trample haste token. Uh, I've talked about that before. Here is the swamp. And. It's this guy. He's that giant that throws things. Sacrifice the colorless creature, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Yep, that's a thing that exists. That might not even be um, in that one other intro pack, but... Oh, here's uh, something I'll probably see in play by someone. Ehedron Archive, 4 mana artifact. Tap to add 2 to your mana pool, or tap 2 and tap it, sacrifice, and draw 2 cards. It's a uh, nice, it's a good, it's pretty good uh, artifact. Dragon Master Outcast. Is that what um is that what that makes the token the dragons? Oh wait, it probably is. Another elemental token, another mountain. Ooh! Gideon! This is great! One of the three planeswalkers in this freaking set. This is awesome right here. And you get calculated. I got fucking got this a Gideon card. That's awesome. Ergolami? Yes, it is. Only slightly better, too. Oh, yes, the Planeswalker. Four mana, four loyalty counters. If you plus one him, he becomes a 5 5 human soldier ally with this that's indestructible. Probably haste. I have to assume haste. Maybe not. For zero, you get to put a 2-2 white ally knight token. 
or for minus four, which if you wanted to play that right off the bat, you get an emblem for all creatures get plus one plus one. That's awesome. Everything's awesome. This Gideon's awesome. Gideon. Uh, I really need to get something to drink. Um, ooh, here's this guy. If you're going to play with Eldrazi. Yes, first Planeswalker. Well, I can only assume I can... I can hope that I get a second Eldra a second Planeswalker. This uncommon card that's been featured in the before this, you know, as a card. Forerunner of, Ons of Slaughter. Target colorless creature gains haste. 3-2 for 2 mana. Sounds like a plan. Oh man, it would be awesome if I got two Planeswalkers. These things are expensive when you come out when you come out of a set like this. Alright. Oh, freaking May. Freaking A. Why is everyone poking me? Or why was everyone poking me? <coughs> Alright, a plant token. I have no idea how that walks, attacks, blocks, or anything. Why so pokey? If you want in the Skype chat, let me know. Do, 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 do. Doom. Mount oh. Mountain, a, another prairie stream, which is great. Trade. I'll trade that to anyone. Uh, another 2 1 for 1 mana. Expedition Envoy. Yeah, it's better than the Avon Envoy by far. Anyone remember that one? Uh, you probably don't. Um, okay, Gideon. Prairie Stream X2. One of those is at least going to be tradable to try and get more land. Okay, next up. I am less than halfway, or I'm more than halfway done. I still have a number of packs to go through. I have 14 packs left, so I'll try to make this as ooh, another octopus. If I get three of them, that means I'm good to go for Kiora once until I, you know, when I get her forced. And it's a foil touch of the void. It's like ghost fire, but uh, parallelly good. Ghost fire was. Uh, Instant speed. This is sorcery, but also in exiles anything that gets sent, sent to the graveyard. Not bad. Okay, and now for the rare. It's that veteran ward leader. It has power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. And if you tap an untapped, tap another untapped ally, he gets an ability. He gets a choice of first strike, vigilance, or trample. Not bad, I guess. As long as he's bigger, he has at least a toughness of a uh, power of three, I can deal with him. Uh, da, 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 mm, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just but land, land, land. You should, I probably should have called this the land set. Not that there's all land, but at least it's not it's a scourge. No legions. God. Glad they didn't try that again. Instead of the legions where it's all creatures, you get all lands or hell, all non-creature spells. Uh, we're back in the land of Timon and Pumbaa. Ooh, this one might work in some kind of an Abzan deck. Brood Butcher. When it comes to the play, I'll put a Eldrazi Scion token into play. And for a green and a black, sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. That's cool. 
Oh. The Rude Butcher. I can only imagine what the next set's going to bring. Huh. Alright. He's not in a start. Alright. I'm glad everybody's watching me. I am trying to make this as interesting as I can, but I'm not very interesting at all. But, everybody wants to see some sweet new card to pull out of a pack, apparently. Guess how many Eldrazi Siren tokens I have? I don't care. One more planes. And something that'll probably never be seen played. Serpentine Spike. Seven mana, Devoid Sorcery. Get to deal two damage to a target creature, three damage to another target creature, and four damage to a third target creature. If they would be sent to the graveyard, you freaking, well, they're exiled, like everything else. <clears throat> uh, no. I can't say any of these would be fun to use. Donut, donut, what the hell? I don't know who this V donut would be. I'm getting kind of. I'm having all these wrappers piled on me somehow. Uh, da, 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 da. I should have like music or something. You know, very soothing, small creep. Tonberry? Why would you have Tonberry on here? Alright, core ally. Swamp. Very, very scary swamp. It's a foil common card. Reclaiming vines. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. If it costs less and was probably rare, it'd probably be awesome. Well, I did get a foil. You, you probably mean an expedition land, right? Right, Rob7588? Eight, eight. <clears throat> I haven't been, uh, been updating that list. Oh, I kind of hope I do, but the chances are getting smaller now. Uh, da, 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 da. And in case you, I did get a foil island, but that's not the same. Anticipate's been reprinted. I barely saw that being played before, but I hope it gets played again some more. This is one of my other rares I got before at the pre-release. Ugin's Insight. Scry X or X is the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. Then draw three cards. Even if you're only scrying for three, that's still pretty good for a five mana. So, you know, can't hate that. Crumble the dust. It likes a spoiler. Oh, yeah. People are getting, like, all kinds of antsy with this spell. Especially in Limited. Uh, when I pre-ordered the box, it was $99 at my card shop. And then, uh, and then when I pre-ordered it, they gave me the promo card. Which I can probably dig up for you right now. When I pre-ordered, they gave me a ruinous pass, ruinous, ruinous path, which uh, obviously is listed up there. I wonder why I'm not getting any problems with my with my internet now. So yeah, ninety nine plus tax when I pre-ordered from them. Yeah, I know. So I figured, you know, I, I didn't spend a hundred, a $20, so I bought the intro pack, the black-white one. Well, you obviously can't see much from that, but... And um, I pulled nothing great from that, but it was still kind of cool. Okay. Um, nothing. There is... I haven't seen this planes before yet. There sure is a lot of hedrons in this set, or in this land. Now, they actually, if I was, maybe I might get a fat pack later, but I think I'll wait for the gift box from the holidays, so I can store all these cards in one go. But they were all out of fat packs when I was going to pre-order for the box. Now, I, now I didn't see, I didn't hear anything about 60 bucks. But obviously, when you get a pack full of like twenty-something lands, full art, 
then yeah, th those are probably going to be worth at least, I don't know, if they're like 50 cents for 20 lands, that's like, what, 10 bucks already? So yeah, you're getting something good. Um, let's see, we have the Wrath of the set. Destroy all non-land creatures with Awaken for 5 mana. Uh, 5 mana to cast, Awaken is 9 mana, or 8 mana. 5 and 3 white. Oh, whew. So if they weren't playing with land creatures, they're going to wish they did. I'm going to hold off on playing that. I'm going to still use End Hostilities for a while. And here's that one discard spell I'm going to have to like collect on, I guess, just to be safe. Transgress the Mind. 80 lands? 80 lands. Damn. That is a lot of lands. Well, in probably in the booster packs, but not from the land pack itself. <coughs> Those expeditions are about as uh, lucky as getting a foil mythic rare. And let me tell you, I don't even know if I've seen one of those yet. Here is a normal enough forest. And here is a foil uncommon card. It is the one I've li I've shown before, the Breaker of Armies, eight mana for a ten eight. All creatures able to block him do so. How's that for a wrath effect? Oh my goodness! Ooh, I need to update my list. <laughs> oh no. Next two and planar outburst. Uh, I I've been hearing some different uh, odds of getting those kinds of lands. The hell! Did I forget this one? Okay, apparently I forgot one rare. <laughs> The Defiant Blood Lord. Huh. Not it's a ver it's a normal version, so it wasn't from my intro pack. Uh, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Alright, so let me just add that to the list. The uh, from what I've been hearing the odds are the the odds were that for every case of magic cards, which is six booster boxes, you'd have likely to get one expedition land. But lately it's been seeming that someone has been saying that for every 150 packs, which is equivalent to like every five booster boxes. <coughs> which card is most expensive? Uh, as far as expeditions or as far as um, anything else? Wizabix. Wiz Wazabix. If you're looking for anything else other than an expedition land, uh, Gideon may be the most expensive right now. Or perhaps even Ulamog himself, which I haven't pulled. But uh, I'm gonna guess, because I haven't really looked at the price, the expedition land that would cost the most. Um. Oh, it'd probably be like a watery grave or one of the fetch lands. Watery grave being the blue black shock land. Yeah, and they're going for upwards of three hundred and possibly four hundred dollars. The card shop I'm I'm I usually go to they're they're trying they're us they're offering upwards of two hundred dollars because obviously they're wanting some to make some profit on that shit. Ooh, here's a fun card for for a five color control deck, maybe. Bring to light with converge. Five mana, green blue. Uh, if you did all five colors you get to look for something that costs five mana and play it as if you paid its cost instead. Which is kinda awesome. Uh, nothing here. Some random stuff. 
Wait, bring the light? Yeah, bring the light. It. Yeah, I guess it is kind of like six to eight dollars, isn't it? Scalding Tarn. Oh. Uh, yeah, that is one of definitely going to be one of the more expensive ones. So everybody wants to play blue red or whatever. <clears throat> Full art lands, the regular basic lands. If I was to guess, it'd be like fifty cents each for the new ones. I was kind of get picking up some of the other ones for a dollar, the older versions, and of, uh, and of course, unhinged lands is like eight to ten bucks. But then unglued lands, oh, don't even think about it. Those things are fucking expensive. <clears throat> You'd be lucky to find one of those. Oh, around a quarter? That's even better. Yeah, and if it involves blue in a fetch land, it's going to be more expensive, definitely. Oh, Island. Three hundred ba dollars is uh, definitely a thing that can happen. Ooh, here's another converge card. Exert influence, gain control of a creature with mana cost. If its power is less than or equal to the number of colors or of mana spent to cast this, and it's a sorcery, not an enchantment. And so you're pretty much keeping that creature when you cast the spell. So yeah, get to have fun with someone else's creature for a while. Oh. For me personally, I really like these converge cards. They just seem like a whole lot of fun to try to mess with. Okay, let's just start a new pile of cards right there. <coughs> Ow. Really getting thirsty. Let's get something to drink. Oh my goodness. Alright. Alright. Another forest. Normal enough. Uh, I got another foil uncommon. The core entanglers. Five mana. For a three four, when you with rally, so anytime a an ally comes into the battlefield, you get to tap it, target creature and opponent controls. And the rare, um, it's not very good, even for a limited standard. Uh, Guardian of Tazim, with landfall, land when you trigger landfall, you get to tap target creature and opponent controls. If that land was an island, you get it doesn't untap during its next controller's untap step. So, you know, I can't have them all good. Tazim. Um, anything else? Anything else? That's not too bad. There's a neat removal spell if you get it to work. Um, I am down to five packs, folks. And wow, my player count just jumped up a, by quite a bit. I'm glad people are watching, enjoying this time. I'm doing this as kind of a practice because I'm wanting to do a, a an unboxing of Brick Loop. Or brick crate, a uh, uh, like kind of a Lego themed. Yes, limited, and blue's not that great. Neither is black. They're, I'm not liking black's removal spells. Okay, this is the weirdest forest ever, and there's not enough weird force to be bothered with it. All right, I need to adjust this. No, that's not going to work. Um, no, that's not working. Um, crap. I'm a lot of room, guys. Well, there's some good blue spells, but... It's not the worst, but... It's definitely not something I'm going to want to play. Um, crap. 
Well, I got another. Anyway, I'll show you this. It's a another foil rare. Uh, it's the exact same foil rare that I got out of my intro pack. Yay me! Now I got two foiled defined bloodlords. Um. Wow. X three. I'm gonna say to foil. I don't know, there's just so many weird cards in this set that I cannot even just comprehend, really. I really, really loved Abzan, just for all of its color combinations and their themes. And their setting was kind of cool. Cons of Tark here, I mean. Abzan was my favorite color combination, of course. Um, I guess Niagara Falls got a new makeover here. Yeah, and I have the Blight Herder, where if you returned cards from the opponent's exile pile, um, you get three colorless Scion Eldrazi tokens. Not bad, I guess. <coughs> Now I gotta wonder how I'm gonna do this. Um, I am surprised I have not seen any ruinous pads, except for my promo one. That is a surprise for me. Ooh, Sylvan Scrying. Um, okay. I almost have a complete set of the new Sylvan Scryings. Sweet. And pretty much after this, I might be ha I might have to just clean up and go to bed, and then put up, rearrange, get all my cards in my binders tomorrow. So I got to go to work in the morning at five o'clock, which means I wake up at three ish. All right. Um. Oh, we've got the Desolation Twins twin, Eldrazi ten ten. Now the set's complete, and we got Funky Bowl Island. Funky Monkey Bowl, and I got a regular Aligned Hedron Network, which um, is fine. If I see a need for them, I'll obviously have them already. I'll just write that as that. Alright, I have three packs left, guys. I'm glad you guys are watching. I'm getting foils, I'm getting some things, I'm having a good time. Uh, oh, here's an interesting one. Ulamog's Nullifier. If you're really set on playing Eldrazi, I'd probably pay you pissed if you played him. Just saying. <laughs> when it comes into play, put two cards from Exile into the graveyard. If you do counter target spell, won't I be happy for that? <clears throat> okay, seriously, why aren't you opening? So far, it's only been one Wrath, one Planeswalker, um, a good handful of lands, of the other newer lands, um, Octopus Eldrazi Sargon. Um, the Easter Islands have seen better days, I guess. Eastern Islands stone statues. I have another foil card, common. Lava Step Raider. One, two, for, for one red is really not too bad, but his ability is not that great. Uh, three mana to make him plus two, plus zero. Yeah, he'd be more awesome if he was fire breathing, of course. Oh, hey, um, I guess I have my new set of Aligned Hedron Networks. Yep, I've got all four now. One promo, or a pre-release, one foil, and two regulars. Uh, I can't say. That's all right, I guess. No one has to look for those for me. 
Oh, I haven't seen this. I haven't really noticed this one much. Rising Miasma. I'm going to miss the, you know, those Drawn in Sorrow. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to be messing with this one. Ugh, the Awakened spell is... The way, the Awakened cost is pretty high, though. Seven mana instead of four to make the land a 3-3. Three, three. Alrighty. Second to last pack, guys. We have, poor ally, a mountain that's seen better days, like maybe from the Burning Crusade in World of Warcraft. I really, uh, really kind of want to... How do you know where the cards belong in sets? Can you show me a website? Um, in sets? Well, it depends. Like, for priceless? There's a... Uh, no, for... Well, there's magicthegathering.com. That's where you start looking, and then you eventually find the set, the thing. Alright, second to last rare. It is the legendary core ally, the Munda Ambush Leader. For four mana, you get a 3-4 haste. Wow, that's a lot of words. When you, when it or another ally enters the battlefield, you may look at the top four cards of your library. If you do reveal any number of ally cards from among them and put those cards on top of your library in any order and the rest on the bottom in any order. Yeah. So uh, you can have never-ending allies if you wanted. I just hope one of them helps you draw more cards. Oh, here's an, in here's an interesting removable spell if you're playing with Eldrazi. Especially the higher cost ones. Titan's Presence. Exile target creature if its power is less than or equal to the revealed card's power. Obviously, if you have a big old Eldrazi, he's gonna, this is going to be really useful. Three mana instant. Oh, I'm going to put that in this pile here. Um, and also, I have a feeling this can be played pretty easily. Blighted Woodland for four mana and to sacrifice this. Look for two basic lands and put them into play tapped. I could play that. I would not be afraid, ashamed of it. All right, last pack, guys. It's been a wild ride. Nothing great in the foil rares. I did get quite a few lands. Nothing though, you know, groundbreaking, earth-shattering like a expedition land. But well, here is another dragon token from that one guy who can make them that I'll never find that I haven't seen yet. Here is the planes with the tipped over hedron. And finally, it is the angel ally, Angelic Captain. Flying when it attacks, it gets plus one until end of turn for each other attacking ally. So it's a potential win win if you don't have to deal with flyers on the other side. Or a very, very bad way of killing off your creatures in some weird way. And see here. Nope, nothing too much. Well, that was it, guys. That was one booster box and one intro pack later. As you can see from my list of cards, that kind of turned out alright. Um... Actually, I forgot to write down stuff, didn't I? I thank you guys for watching me unpack this entire booster box. And I'm glad someone probably had, got a, had fun with it. I'm going to try to upload what I can on from here to YouTube. And then hope it just goes through okay. Alright. Scroll down. Excellent. Well, until next time. Well, I'll, you know, from what I do here, I, I try to stream Breath of Fire 3, sometimes Saga Frontier, and uh, future projects might be even to do uh, 
What's the name of that game? Uh, Azure Dreams from the PlayStation. If you would like to donate to someone who's down on been down on